I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. Tonight, I'm happy to welcome back Marv Cowan. Uh, Marv, we learned last week, is a his great-great-grandpa was a Mormon pioneer, that he was born in the church, his parents were married in the temple, and he even converted a young man when he was in the seventh grade and had a strong testimony of Joseph Smith and the gospel, wanted it to be true, and all was well until he met some Christian young men who challenged the notion that he could become a god after this life. And so he began studying and found out that that really isn't talked anywhere in the Mormon uh, literature, at least certainly in the Book of Mormon and not in the Bible at all. He's also written a very excellent book called Mormon Claims Answered, and you can find this at uh, Utah Lighthouse Ministry, and uh, if you contact me at this station, we can also uh, make arrangements to have you get this book. So, Marv, we appreciate you coming back and sharing, and we also were at the point where you had graduated from a seminary school in, in Colorado and had decided to come to Utah to set up uh, churches because there were over 200 cities here that didn't have anything but an LDS church. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, <clears throat> how, how did that go? You, well, I mean, I had were you some... able to invite people to church and start? Yes. Uh, yeah. We did. We did a lot of knocking on doors and so forth. Yeah. I, I had uh, a good model from the Mormon missionaries. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you knew how to do that. So that's what we did. We knocked yeah. on doors until we had enough. Uh, you found some Christians that were willing we to come? We found a few Christians and we found some others that were uh, questioning Mormons who uh, yeah. were interested in knowing more about the Bible, so we would set up Bible studies wow. with them and so forth. And this was in the early 60s. Now, mm -hmm. I'm just thinking back, Fawn Brody's book had been out. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of that book? Yes, I had read that uh, by you? that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and did, had you found other Mormons that had been reading that book or anyone uh, that... Only a few. Only uh, a few. Uh, yeah. uh, when I got my copy, uh, I bought it at uh, Deseret Book. But they had, oh my it, goodness. they had it under the counter. Okay. <laughs> I had to ask for it. No man knows my history yeah. or my story. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, so a after you'd been here for a little bit of time, I understand you took a trip to Chicago, which started a snowball of events. So <laughs> tell us just a little bit about that. Well, um, in those days, I, I rode the train some yeah. uh, to go to different meetings. Um, and uh, when I got on the train in Salt Lake, I saw immediately that the car was loaded with Mormon missionaries, and I was kind of the oddball. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I got seated, and, and uh, the train started to move, and I st struck up a conversation with the person next to me, and I said, well, um, I have a, a question maybe you can help me to answer that uh, I, uh, I really haven't found a good answer to yet. And I said, doesn't the church still teach uh, that there was a universal apostasy? And I was assured, yes, of course, they yeah. did teach that. And I said, well, um, <clears throat> I've done some reading in Mormon literature, and 
uh, for example, in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 7, it says that John the Apostle never died, and he was to remain on the earth until the Lord returns, preaching the gospel and so forth. And the Book of Mormon in 3rd Nephi, chapter 28, mentions the three Nephite disciples or apostles that uh, never died, and they were specifically challenged to uh, preach the gospel, baptize, add to the church, and so forth, until Jesus returned. And I said, <coughs> I have a... <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I have a difficult time understanding how you can have, on the one hand, a universal apostasy, and yet you have four apostles that never died. People with the priesthood, presumably. Yeah, they, these were people of authority. Yeah. Not to mention all the converts they supposedly were to make. They were doing this until Christ comes. Yeah, so. should be doing it right now today. Yeah. And uh, uh, the missionary next to me looked kind of puzzled and said, well, let me check with somebody else here. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> <Pretty> can imagine <laughs> <laughs> squirming. <laughs> Pretty soon there was a huddle up in the front end of the railroad car, and they were all up there in uh, <clears throat> several minutes, and finally, just like uh, the floodgates opened up, they all came back towards me at once and said, that's a very interesting question you ask, and we don't seem to have the answer. <laughs> uh, if Joseph Fielding Smith were here, uh, he could answer it for you. I said, well, would you get me the answer? Because I really sincerely would like to have an answer. Well, yeah, uh, if you'll give us your name and address, and of course I did, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> You're still waiting for I'm an answer. I'm still waiting for that answer. <laughs> but oh, that's uh, funny. as they came back, <clears throat> after I gave them my name and address and so forth, the, uh, they said, uh, by the way, uh, what do you know about Mormonism? And I recognized that as the first of the two golden questions. The golden and questions, yeah. So I said, well, before you ask the other question, maybe you'd like to know a little bit about my background, and uh, so the, the, uh, they said, well, yeah, tell us. And I said, well, my great-grandparents were Mormon pioneers in the Salt Lake Valley, and, and my grandparents were involved in the church, and my parents were involved too, married in the temple and so forth, and, and I was raised Mormon too. And the missionary that had been sitting next to me said, I thought you said you were a Baptist minister. I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> it was quiet for a little bit, and then finally one of them said, well, why did you change? I said, I'd love to tell you about it. And, <laughs> and were so you able to share? I shared my uh, experience of coming to know Christ. I said, I found something in Jesus Christ that I could not find in Mormonism. No church can offer salvation, but Jesus Christ can. He himself said in John uh, chapter 6, verse 47, he that believes on me has everlasting yeah. life. And uh, uh, just so many times, John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, not by my church or my authority, my laws and ordinances or something no else, religion. but yeah. by me. Yeah. And I said, so I came to the conclusion after I did some study that it isn't the church that saves, it's the Christ of the church that saves, mm -hmm. and the church is the body of believers, and it's not made up just of Mormons or Baptists or any other specific denomination. It's made up of believers in Jesus Christ. Where two or three are gathered. Yeah, yeah. right. That yeah. isn't a message we get in the Latter-day Saint church, is it? No, no, you know, I was talking to a missionary um, uh, it's been a few years ago now, uh, this particular one. I, I've had similar conversation, but this one I'm thinking of, it really stood out. Uh, he had just finished his mission, and um, <clears throat> I said, well, uh, I'm uh, interested in uh, uh, what, what was the message that you shared while you were missionary? And he began to, to share, and I said, uh, well, um, by the way, how do you intend to get into the presence of God? And he kind of hesitated and he said, well, I, I try to live the commandments and, uh, <laughs> and I've done my temple work and, I, and, and he just went on and on and on. And I said, what about Jesus Christ? And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, who is he? Well, he's our Savior, I guess. I said, what is he saved from? Um, <laughs> our sins, I guess. And I said, well, all of them are part of them. And he said, well, all of them, I guess. And I said, well, 
if he's the one that saves from your sins, when I asked the question about how you, <laughs> you intended to get in the presence of, of God, uh, you didn't even mention him. And I, he said, oh, that's an interesting observation. <laughs> Again, that idea that, that we just don't put it all together for, yeah. some, for some strange reason. Yeah. So you're over here now setting up churches, and is that going well? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, several uh, churches, and uh, this is in the '60s again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things I found in door-to-door -door work um, yeah. back in, at that time, uh, you made reference to last week uh, the missionary manual you used. Yeah. And I was very familiar with that because it was very adversarial. Yeah, uh, Mr. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, if you didn't say my church is false in that first few minutes, why uh, you weren't a good contact. But uh, yeah, that's right. But because of that adversarial uh, attitude, I found going door to door was um, um, a, a real challenge. I got knocked off of doorsteps. I got punched in the nose. Oh, really? And yanked off of my feet by my necktie. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? You were just inviting them to come to church? Uh, to a no, I was church? trying to share the gospel, actually. Yeah. Um, I remember one night in particular when I got punched in the nose, uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, couple that had invited me uh, didn't tell me, but the, they invited a 70 as well to be there. And he was an older man, and, and uh, he tried to take the floor. and. I said, well, we were invited to come and share our beliefs, and that's what I'd like to do. But he said, well, you believe in God, we believe in God. You believe the Bible, we believe the Bible. And he just went on and on for no a little bit. No difference, huh? <laughs> yeah. And I said, uh, you, you say you believe the Bible, um, uh, and yet you, you also believe that uh, there are portions that are missing from the Bible. I, I, I said, I've read uh, Talmadge's uh, Articles of Faith, for example. He mentions 20 lost books, and several other uh, writers mention these yeah. lost books. And I said, um, do you have those books? And uh, he said, yes. And I said, do you have uh, books like the Book of Adi the Prophet? And he said, yes. I said, I'm sorry, but you'll have to tell that to somebody else. I was raised Mormon, and I know you I know, know better. <laughs> I know better than, and that's when I got punched in the nose. I, I was too combative, I guess. <laughs> well, that's funny. But um, I had a, uh, an experience that was similar to that um, at a um, release time um, seminary, religious education yeah. seminary type program up in uh, Ogden area. <coughs> Uh, word got out that this ex-Mormon was over teaching the Bible, and when school got out, why well, in came eight Mormon seminary teachers, and uh, wow. they challenged me immediately. What's this we hear about you being a former Mormon over here just teaching the Bible? Surely you know the Bible is incomplete. And I said, incomplete? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, and they started talking about those missing books again. <laughs> and so I, I said, um, do you have them? And that's what I got, silence. <laughs> and they looked at one another for a little bit, and then uh, I said, well, are they in the Book of Mormon? And then I was shocked, because at least half of those guys started looking in the table of contents. To see if they were in the Book of Mormon. To see if they were in the Book of Mormon. I said, there's only 15 books in the whole Book of Mormon. You yeah, can't have yeah. 20 not, lost books in there. They're not there. And then uh, I said, well, what about the Doctrine and Covenants? Well, they knew better than that, because that's just yeah. revelations. And I said, Pearl of Great Price? Well, no. Well, I said, uh, you know, Joseph Smith did rewrite the, the Bible. Yeah, well, how many books did he put in there? Did he replace those books? Yeah, he didn't. None of them could answer me. I said, well, <laughs> I happen to have a copy of his uh, inspired version of yeah. the Bible, the Joseph Smith translation with me. Uh, take a look at it. Uh, count the uh, <laughs> books that are there. There's Same only as your King James. <laughs> there's 65. He lost a book. You oh. know? 
<laughs> he did? Took the Sol Song of Solomon. Oh, uh, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask you about, a. I know you, we mentioned even last week about the changes that you've seen mm -hmm. and, and how difficult it was when you first started back in the 60s and, and you've seen people come forward. Uh, of course, the Tanners, Gerald and Sandra Tanner, I guess you're familiar with them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the work they did. Were you able to share and talk and visit with them over, as uh, they started? Oh, yes. Did you? Yes. Uh, was that supportive to, to find it, finally it, get more people kind of more visible yes yeah uh, it was uh, refreshing to me because I at that time I had only met that one couple and they, they were in Colorado who had been Mormons and uh, were, were Christians and so it was nice to know that there were others that I wasn't as yeah. uh, strange <laughs> as I thought maybe <laughs> I was you know you wonder, don't you, if you're, I mean, even I didn't share any of my story with anybody, and I just figured I was, re I was inventing the wheel. I, mm -hmm. had, I didn't know about you, I didn't know about the Tanners or mm -hmm. anyone else, and I just thought I was learning this stuff all by myself. And so it was, so did yeah. you, did you share things with them as you, you yeah. I know they, they did a lot of research and yes. wrote books and so on. Yes, and I really appreciated the, their work because they were careful to try to uh, document things and, yeah. and uh, were faithful in, in trying to convey exactly what was there and so forth. So that's what I appreciate. I, I don't like to see people just off the cuff say things that are you no, know, right. half, half truths. Right. I, I want it to be accurate. And sure. <coughs> and uh, the Tanners did an, an excellent job. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even TV20 here has been now the last many years, six or eight years, I don't know exactly their time frame, but what uh, has that, have you seen a change? Oh yeah, uh, I think uh, TV20 has uh, been a great uh, instrument to inform people. I hear people all the time talking about the yeah. programs that they've seen on it. And, yeah. um, you know, when we started, uh, there wasn't even a Christian radio station. I was just going to ask you about 8.20. We have that 8.20 a.m. now. Yeah, that wasn't the here. The truth, that wasn't here. No, there, there weren't any. In fact, it was interesting. I was serving as chairman of the evangelical ministers. There were a handful of us. In, here in Salt Lake. In, in Salt yeah. Lake. And uh, KSL came to us and uh, wanted us to put on a 15-minute program. Uh, they would uh, not charge us. But uh, uh, the really? guy that, that approached us said, we actually need to do it because we're in danger of losing our license. If uh, we fair balance mm -hmm. reporting or something, mm -hmm. yeah. And so we started having a little uh, program. And, really? And, and uh, uh, that was our, f our first foray into... And what were you able to share? Um, just they, a Bible message, yeah, or yeah, just it wasn't anti-Mormon no, no, per se. No, I mean, you didn't talk uh, about, uh, and we knew better than to do that on a KSL. Yeah, uh, you didn't talk station. about Joseph Smith's polygamy or <laughs> yeah, anything like that, like that. I guess. Yeah. No, but uh, we just shared the the gospel, and uh, from the times that I spoke on it, I, I got uh, responses even from um, New Mexico and oh up in Washington and so yeah. forth. Uh, they were hearing that. That little program. Wow, and what, what was the time frame of that? How long did it last? Was it um, in the 60s, 70s? Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember exactly when uh, it was still going in the 70s, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and was it on Sunday at some time? Uh, yes, yeah. Sunday evenings. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but... Uh, How interesting. Um, so that was... And then uh, Christian radio started coming in there, and then there were three or four different stations yeah. over time that developed. And, oh. and uh, so now a few weeks ago we had Bill McKeever on. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of him? And oh yes. He came in the '70s, I believe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, had you been able to share with him too? And oh yes. Yeah. yeah. I know Bill, and I appreciate his ministry too. He's, yeah. He's been a faithful. Um, well, there are resources, and, and you know, for me, coming out, it was all Mormon doctrine or Mormon literature that I looked at. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything that was I would consider anti-Mormon. Mm -hmm. um, one book that I did read was uh, Grant Palmer's An Insider's View of Mormon mm -hmm. Origins. 
But I felt comfortable reading that because he was an institute director, and mm -hmm. I figured that was going to be a safe book. I, mm -hmm. I learned later that I, it, it made me think, mm -hmm. and, and that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> I was uh, learning things that I had never heard before. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you see as the biggest differences now? Well, um, they changed their mission program for one thing, so it's instead of being adversarial, uh, us against them. Christians. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's more, we've got a lot in common. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they try to, to say we are Christians too, and so forth, and yet uh, if you turn that around and, and try to tell them, for example, if I uh, tell them I'm a Mormon too, uh, but I don't believe in Joseph Smith, and I don't believe in the Book of Mormon, and, and so forth. You don't think they buy that, huh? They, they, uh, I've tried that a time or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they always say, you can't be a Mormon. You can't be a Mormon unless. That. And I just say, well, likewise, uh, you can't be a Christian if you deny salvation by God's grace. That's what a Christian is, you know, yeah. he's the one who's been saved by the grace of God plus nothing else. Yeah. And uh, so I try to put it in perspective for them, but um, uh, they want it just one direction. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I was going to ask you about other books, but including yours, have you had some response from your book? Oh yeah, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> back when we first did it, uh, it was hand crank mimeograph to start with, you know. Was it? And uh, when it was in that form, um, <clears throat> there was a young fellow that um, uh, was on a mission in Mexico, and um, his brother was killed in an auto accident, and uh, uh, he took time off to come back for the funeral. Uh, he told me that they didn't really want him to, but he did. And uh, some of the young people who had been here <coughs> working with me the previous summer had left uh, the mimeograph copy of uh, this uh, at his parents' home. and. Uh, I don't know uh, <clears throat> exactly what the connection was, why it was left there, but he got that and he started reading it and took it with him when he headed back to Mexico and he got down. To finish his, his mission. Uh, he was still going back <laughs> to finish his mission. Oh boy. And uh, he got back as, as far as uh, Southern California and, and he called me and we talked for about two hours. He said, I can't go back. I have way too many questions now. <laughs> oh no, interesting. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the follow-up to that was he did become a Christian. The last I knew he was a, an associate in an oh evangelical church. And, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's one. Uh, another was an interesting one over in uh, Australia. Um, <clears throat> fellow, well he was a missionary, uh, was to baptize a, a family of Baptists into the Mormon church. and. Uh, uh, when he got there to pick him up to take him to be baptized, <coughs> they uh, told him um, that they had changed their mind and that this book was the reason. <laughs> and this is before the internet, of course, yeah, and yeah. everything. How did they run across it, do you know? <laughs> uh, I am not sure how they got it, but uh, they, they had changed it. their mind. Yeah, and oh, uh, they gave him the book. <coughs> he came back and, <coughs> and was uh, uh, going to BYU, <coughs> and <coughs> he um, thought he could answer it and refute what I had written. Yeah. And the more he uh, checked the references and so forth, the more he realized he couldn't do it. And so he um, had a ministry of his own uh, to Mormons. He became Christian. He became a Christian. So and the missionary, <laughs> oh my, they gave him the book. Yeah. He eventually contacted you. Well, I, I do think, and I've thought this all the way along, <laughs> if Mormons knew as much as we know, or at least what I learned about Mormonism, it would certainly make them think. Yes. And yeah. I do think, don't, uh, we haven't talked to, to do, talked at all about the internet and the, the new mm. essays that have come out. Oh, yeah. You feel like this is impacting? Oh, yes. Yeah. Very definitely. Because it's opening up. Now, I, I realize that sometimes it isn't easy to find these gospel topics or gospel essays, they have to actually go in and mm -hmm. search them out, mm -hmm. but uh, you think it's having an impact then? Yes, I do. Uh, I've uh, met a number of people who uh, have questions, and I, I keep hearing rumbles of, 
others that are talking about leaving the church and so forth yeah. because of uh, uh, things that they see. Um, <clears throat> back in those earlier days, uh, in the early 60s, I know how hard tanners worked to get material. And, yeah, just to share. And, um, yeah. I, you know, I was doing some research on the Book of Abraham before the original documents were found. And, oh, and before 1967. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And the church has those now. Yeah. And, uh, but you don't hear much about them. No. For good it, reason, because they don't yeah. <laughs> have anything to do with Abraham, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I sent copies uh, of those facsimiles that appear in uh, all of the uh, Pearl of Great Price yeah, yeah. Book of Abraham. I sent them to Dr. Wills of Chicago University, Dr. Parker at Brown. <clears throat> I said, is this Egyptian? Can you read it? And if you can, uh, what does it what say? Does say? And essentially they told me it was uh, um, Book of the Dead or the, you know, the funeral papyri right. stuff. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so it was a little later that the originals showed up, and then, I don't know if you remember, but they were on the front page of the Deseret News. Yeah, and, and an ensign article and everything. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I got copies. In fact, I went to the distribution center and I got glossy photos of all those um, uh, papyri that were found. Yeah. And then I sent copies back to these same guys, and I said, "Now what would you say?" That before they said they were poor copies, but they they yeah. knew what they were. And they said, well, it's, it's genuine Egyptian now, but we wouldn't change what we said about them. <laughs> They're still... <laughs> They're still not about the book of Abraham. No, have nothing to do with Abraham. Well, Mark, believe it or not, our time is just almost gone. Oh. It, it's been so quick, and I appreciate so much your sharing. What would you say to the LDS people that might be listening and searching and thinking? What would you say to them? Well, uh, I appreciate the good moral... Uh, <clears throat> stance that the Mormon Church takes, and I believe that a lot of Mormons are sincere, but apart from Jesus Christ, uh, a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, they don't have a ghost of a chance of spending eternity with God. And um, uh, Jesus made it very clear there in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He didn't say anything about a church, didn't say anything about authority, didn't say anything about uh, uh, a lot of these other things that people get caught up in, but it's it's a matter of what we do with Christ. And I would challenge Mormons on that uh, particular point. Study the are, Bible and... Are you trusting in Jesus Christ plus nothing else? Yeah. I've asked that question numerous times and, uh, uh, you know, they keep wanting to <laughs> bring the church in and Joseph Smith and the restoration yeah. and, and Jesus those things. plus nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's he Christ. that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Right. Well, Marv, you're a delight. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next week here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Good night.